Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. Today we have a review of Grid Autosport from the wonderful people over at Codemasters. A big thanks to those guys for the review copy. Now there's a few genres that have been missing on the Switch. I'd say that racing and particularly the simulation style racing we see here has been one underrepresented genre. But Grid hopes to change all of that. Who better to do it than Codemasters themselves? How does it fare on the Switch? Let's find out. I'm finding a strange thing with many of the Nintendo Switch releases. I almost have a deja vu when I start playing them and I suddenly remember that actually, do you know what, I played this back on Xbox when it first released. The thing that I loved about it, and I remember it clearly, was the speed with which the cars moved. And to give you an example of that, check out this stage from the uh, faster open wheel cars. The first thing you're going to want to do is to create your own driver and then give them a name. The game will have many preset ones available so that at certain times it will say your name. I used to love this in the old football games back in the day. The career mode that you'll spend the majority of your time in is split into several different disciplines. These include touring, endurance, open wheel, tuner and street, which are framed around different sponsorship opportunities. And as you progress through the different seasons, you'll unlock more sponsorships, more cars and invariably more races to take part in. It's easy to get into your first race and the criteria that particular sponsor wants you to achieve are shown here. Before beginning, you can spend a little bit of time practicing the course, tuning up your vehicle and if you have any upgrades, fitting those to your car or changing the ones you've currently got selected. Controls are quite standard for the genre with the right triggers being used to accelerate and the left to brake. What's nice is that they've included support for the GameCube controller so that you can then use those analog triggers. You can also use the right stick for analog levels of acceleration if you so choose. It's really nice to see how well the game has ported over to the Switch in terms of the destruction models on the cars. Pieces will be flying off all around you, affecting your visibility as well as performance. The default difficulty of the game is very easy indeed and it will not only show you a racing line but it will break for you as well. So as soon as you're comfortable you're going to want to switch that off. For the gearheads that haven't played the series before, you'll be glad to know that there are many licensed vehicles available to you and that each one handles completely differently. Now I mentioned that pre-race you can customise the tuning of your vehicles. As you get into some of those supercars, the complexity of the tuning experience only increases with many more notches available to tweak varying aspects of the car and these make a difference to how it performs. While racing, you're going to want to play around with the different views to find the one that suits you. Now, I'm an old school Toka Touring Cars player from back in the day. The view that always suited me was the on bonnet one for some strange reason. The teammate system makes a welcome return and allows you to be a touch more hands on with them, give them some instructions such as to attack or defend. But if you don't fancy doing that, then you can just get on with racing. Just don't expect them to do very well. I guess the real appeal of the game for many is how easy it is to pick up and play, but also how deep you can dive in if you really want to. The endurance races are a prime example of how the whole experience becomes a strategic one, as you try and balance the wear and tear of your tyres while still maintaining a solid lead. And it's not just the tyres you're going to need to worry about. Different parts of your car can become damaged throughout a season in certain modes, and for the motorheads among you, it's those little intricacies that are going to keep you playing. While the game features over a hundred different licensed vehicles, these are split into several tiers. And as such, it does feel like there's a real progression as you move on to the more powerful vehicles with more customization and tweakable options. Thankfully, you're getting all of the DLC material that was added to the 360, like time trials, drag races, and the custom cup mode, which includes some amazing things like demolition derby, checkpoint, and eliminator. The demolition derby mode in itself almost feels like an entire game. I used to love the classic destruction derby games on the PSX, so getting behind the wheel of an American muscle car was a carnage-filled delight. <laughs> So we have excellent vehicle handling and physics and a large number to choose from. The next and probably most important thing are the tracks and you are more than catered for here. You have over 130 different variations through 28 locations, but there are 15 well-known real life tracks 
and a few fictional ones, as well as the street and drag tracks, so you will certainly not be bored. The final component for me really is the computer AI. Now, I've played a few race games and particularly some ones on Switch which were good games, but the problem was that the AI just followed a set route and was almost on rails for the majority of the race. That's not the case with Grid. Here it feels much more natural and has a flow to it. Other drivers will spin out and crash in front of you and you'll be notified over the headset, giving you a few precious seconds to react. The flashback system also gives you that extra way of mitigating some of the frustrations that come with the genre, and for the hardcore players, there's the option of playing without any of this and cranking the difficulty right up. So I'm sure you're thinking it sounds perfect, Mark. What could possibly go wrong here? This is an amazing game, and you'd be absolutely right, only there's something missing. And it's a very large component, in my opinion, that would be the multiplayer. The developers have stated that they'll be patching this into the game at some point, but it's definitely missed upon launch. In my opinion, the online aspect is essential, especially when you're doing things like time trialing in your beautiful pink and white switch up mobile, only to find that your scores aren't logged for anyone else to compete against. It's a shame and something that will make a huge difference to the game upon its release. I think in terms of complaints though, it's a minor gripe. The overall racing experience here is a delight with several different disciplines, a ton of different types of race to take part in and many, many cars to enjoy the whole experience. The controls are excellent and the inclusion of the GameCube controller compatibility just goes to show how much Codemasters wanted to do this thing right. I'd scored the gameplay at the moment 17 out of 20. When that multiplayer component goes live, then this will definitely go up. As it stands, the controls are wonderful. There's no issues here at all, really. Controls score 20 out of 20. Grid Autosport was always quite a good looking title but it looks just fantastic on the switch and there are three different performance modes to choose from the default quality mode is around about 30 frames per second almost all the time with dynamic lighting real-time shadow maps and the interior of your vehicle being of a higher quality and including things like windscreen wipers when needed reflections upon your vehicle are all accurate and the particle system in things like smoke and even some fog make this easily the best looking racing game currently on the switch the fluid motion blur used makes it look much smoother smoother than it actually is in this quality mode and it's the way I've enjoyed the game most thus far. Performance mode then increases that frame rate right up to 60, but you'll notice quite the downgrade. It looks a bit more like a Sega Rally game when it's in this mode. Some of the shallow depth of field effects from the interior of the car, as well as some of those moving components will no longer be available. If you're all about those high frame rates for those tight corners, then this might be the option for you. The final option is a mode designed to increase battery life, believe it or not. And well, it does exactly that. I've not fully tested it, by running my switch to zero but look there are other channels that enjoy that type of thing i'm sure they'll release videos on it what's brilliant is just how much effort has been put into this port i briefly mentioned the destruction models and every single vehicle in the game has them things like wing mirrors will be pinging off dents will be crunched into the side of your car and the whole thing can end up looking like a tin can by the end of the race in terms of the audio the engine sounds are fantastic but the thing that really stood out to me as what a subtle addition, but done so well, is how they've implemented the HD rumble. As you drive over different surfaces, for example, the ground in Barcelona, you'll feel a very distinctly different vibration dependent on the surface you're on, and this made a real difference to how immersive the game feels. While the soundtrack isn't incredible, it does its job, it's just nothing stand out, but having your own name spoken out is a lovely touch. The game almost looks just as good in handheld, which is equally impressive and runs excellently here. For me, the visual score 19 out of 20. The only improvement I can see there is when we get that HD graphics pack that's going to improve the textures of every single car in the game, believe it or not, and then I think we can clock that up to 20. The music and sound are decent, and the inclusion of HD Rumble is good. Audio scores 17 out of 20. The game's gonna cost £29.99, €34.99, or $34.99. Let's be honest here, if this was an A title, it would be £50. That's nothing against it but some companies are willing to bump the price because they know, heck, we're the only one, we're gonna sell like hotcakes, and they could have done that here, but they didn't. Yes, you can find it for much, much cheaper on other platforms, as it is a slightly older title, but I'm quite happy to pay this price, bearing in mind it includes all the DLC, will include multiplayer soon, and is running brilliantly. There are more than enough races and disciplines to keep you engaged for a huge amount of time, and I enjoyed the excellent career mode. Value scores 15 out of 20.
When this game was first released, the idea of playing it in a handheld form would have been laughed at, but here we are, around about five years later, enjoying the full experience in the palm of our hand. It is an excellent racing experience, and for people who have been waiting for a more simulation-based one on the Switch, wait no longer. It scores a Switch Up score of 88%. It is a shame it hasn't launched with multiplayer, but we'll see that soon enough. And the inclusion of the absolutely free download of high-resolution textures is one more reason to go out and buy it. Thanks so much to all our patrons who support the channel each and every month. And to all of you, leave a comment down below. Let me know if you're picking this one up. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya! Yeah.